yeah, fucking donuts from the caves. That's the place to get them. So today we're going to be crushing some deadlifts when we're cycle two. This is the first deadlift workout. I think it's like 240, 280, and then 320. So I think it looks like it's going up about 40 pounds per lift. And that's going to be three set of five. And again, since I'm struggling on my lockout, we're going to do some more lockout work. Uh, maybe do some block work or some reverse bands on the deadlift. So like I said before, I am working on my lockout that is the weakest part of my deadlift. And so even during my warm-ups, I'm taking it up slow, yeah, taking it up slow, and then powering through at the top end, and that's going to continue throughout the rest of the warm-up. So just go ahead and ignore that homoerotic verbiage. Um, but you guys get the point, all right? So because that's the weakest part of my lift, that's really where I'm going to focus throughout the entirety of my workout and even in my accessory work. So I'm gonna do a lot of block pulls, I'm gonna do a lot of reverse band work, uh, rack pulls, things like that. Things that are gonna help me at the top end of my lift. And hopefully I'll see some good results. So I am not of Be Rich and Famous. And I don't make a whole lot of money doing this YouTube stuff. In fact, I think I only have about six views per video. But I have scrounged together all of my workout equipment off Craigslist. I think the only thing that I bought full retail price was the bar and the bumper plates squat rack and that all came from again faster everything else i either built or scrounged off craigslist that's why you see my steel plates have different colors to them um but you know it's whatever works for me works for me whatever's cheap you know weights usually go for about a dollar a pound and when you're needing 400 to 500 pounds of weights just to continue your workout it can add up and get pretty pricey and again i'm not rich so i do what i can and for the most part i can find some good shit but there's some people on there that are trying to sell some cheap ass shit for way too much fucking money and then they feel like you're lowballing so probably about every day every other day i get on craigslist and i look to see what is on sale and if i can get a deal well i definitely looks less impressive without all the bumper weights on there but that's okay. So there's 285 on the bar right now. And if you notice, probably on the, I want to say the third set, it's so hot and sticky out here in Arizona, man. I'm not sweating in my garage just sitting here. But the damn bar is like sticking to my thighs. So I think in the next one, you're going to see me all baby powdered up because I'm going to go for max reps on 320. So I guess by max reps, I mean I'm going to stop at 10. But there's a reason for that. We'll get to that in a second. So once I started the deadlifts, I just sort of caught fire and just kept going. Uh, my initial plan was to stop and go because I believe that that's the best way to do your deadlifts. Um, thankfully for me, I'm not one of those people that just let the weights sort of bring me down to the ground. And so I always control the descent. So at least I'm getting some sort of benefit here. But yeah, these were touch and go for 10. Um, I decided to give it up. I maybe had two or three more reps in me but um as you can see here uh my hand started to tear so uh, i didn't want to risk further injury i think anybody who's ever had a hand tear uh knows how much it sucks i mean if you tear your hand pretty good you're pretty much out of the game i've taped up my hand before and mm, it doesn't really help it still hurts a lot so if you tear your hand you're out of the game since i was like a partial tear i just went ahead and decided to give it a rest and then what we're going to do now is we're going to move into reverse band deadlifts. Um, since this is my first time really doing reverse band deadlifts, I'm going to take it easy. We're going to start at 370, and we're going to do six, six sets of two um, just to get some extra volume in. And then from there, we'll do some back workout. So this is how I usually tape my hand. Um, come around the finger, then down across, and then just wrap it around the wrist a couple times. Uh, so it works well. Picked up this technique from Jason Kleep. I saw it on one of his videos. Um, and I've sort of never went with anything else. So here we go, getting ready for these reverse bend deadlifts. And I gotta tell you, um, I don't know if I really felt a whole lot of help from the bands. Maybe because my lockout is so weak that even with the help of bands, it feels the same. Um, I always feel pretty good coming off the floor. It's just that top end that I have issues with. So hopefully these six sets of two will put a little fire on my ass. So yeah, maybe this is why the bands aren't helping as much as I thought. There is too much slack in these bands. Um, if they're helping, they're helping very little. Um, another thing that I decided to do was try a different setup. So normally I set up on the bar, 
and take my time. But here, I did more of a grip it and rip it style. Um, and I liked it. Felt really good. Um, a little bit more dangerous though. So now this is the seventh set. This isn't anything planned. I just wanted to see how much the bands were helping. Um, like I had said before, there was a little bit of slack in them. And let me tell you something. <laughs> However much the bands were helping, uh, they were helping more than I thought because these deadlifts felt really tough. Granted, this is the seventh set, but really slow coming off the floor. I'm going to definitely attribute that to not having the bands on. Um, but still didn't feel terribly heavy or too much of a difference.